In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can create this node that will convert any texture into this retro pixel art look. After that, I'll show you how you can paint pixel art faces on top of it. And then if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll dive into various methods I use to reduce geometry and create this low poly retro look. But with that being said, let's dive in and get started. For this example, I'm going to use this cat adventure character, which I've shown how to make on this channel. And I also have the finished project files up on my Patreon. And you see here that I have a base color plugged into a BSDF node here. What I'm going to do is drag out this mapping here. So you see, I just have a UV plugged in and you can even just go ahead and get rid of that one. And we're going to search and we're going to add a Veroni texture. Now, CG Matter actually helped me come up with this portion of the solution. So credit out to him and link to his channel below. We're going to plug the UV generated or whatever mapping you are using into the vector here. And then we're going to take that position from that Veroni texture and plug that into the vector. And you're going to see immediately that it begins splitting everything up. Now you can leave these settings up here to normal, but we're going to come down here and we're going to turn off the randomness. And you see now we're already starting to get that grid like pattern. Now what we're going to do is up the scale. So I'm going to up this to something like 128. And you can see immediately how it's beginning to turn our character here into a pixel art. But we can actually improve this a bit more and let's look at how. If you'd like to further support the channel, check out my Patreon. I put up project files, materials, and I also do some walkthroughs of some of my project files so you can get an idea of how I put scenes together. But let's get back to the video. Now pixelation is only one part of the retro texture art look. The other thing is the limited color palette. When you look at these old games, they have extraordinarily small amounts of colors mixed in there. So we're going to look at creating what's called a posterization effect. Now, this is something you can do in the compositor, but we want to do it within our shader. Now, this lovely channel here showed how to break it down and do it with math snap nodes. And I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description below. If you're interested in the depth of how the math snap node works, I found this user here with a pretty great explanation on Stack Exchange. But in short, what it'll do is round the input value down to the nearest integer. And that's a bit easier to show. So let's just unmute this here. And you can see how it's turning this gradient into just various steps of shades of the color. Now, what we want to do is use this to split up our colors and limit the amount of colors. Let's look at how to do that. Now, coming back to our cat here, if we grab the math snap function here, so we're just going to add a math node, drag that over there, click the add here. And we're going to turn that into snap, which you will find down here. Now, if I click that there, you'll see that it's working, but it's unfortunately converting it to grayscale, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is split the RGB values and treat it on each color and then put them back together. So it's actually quite a simple process. We will come here into search and we will look for separate color. And then we're going to drag that over here after our image. Now we have red, green, and blue, and we can pipe all of those into the snap node. So we're going to duplicate this snap node three times, and we're going to drag one into each. Make sure you're plugging it into that top value socket. Now what we're going to do is combine the colors. So if we search for a combined color, we'll put that after the snap nodes, and then we will just drag these in here. Now we can easily begin limiting the colors. So we can change every individual color here, I like to do them all at once. So what we're going to do is add another math node. And the reason we're using a math node instead of a value node will make sense later. So we're going to grab this value here, plug this into the increment. And the default setting is 0.5. As you can see, that's reducing the colors a little too much. And what we can do is bring this down. And I found things that under 0.1 tend to kind of look the best. And we can use this to crush our colors and get more of a retro look. Now we're going to package this all up and put it into an easy little one convert node. But before we do that, I've been showing you how to do this with a image texture example. And I realize that many of you may have simpler characters that just have simple gradients or solid colors. And I'm going to do a little side tangent here and show you how you'd go about doing that type of pixelation. So I'm going to add a color ramp here, add this into the position, plug this into the color just like I would. Now, because I don't have this UV mapped in a way that would be nice for a color ramp, I'm going to switch this over to generated. And you can see that it's really working on any color that we plug in here. And to further add to the effect, you could take a mixed color here. We'll switch this to multiply, set this to one. And then we can plug a noise texture into here. 
and then we can play with that noise texture and you can see how we're still kind of getting that retro pixel look even when inputting solid colors or simple gradients. But we're going to revert back now and let's look at how we can create this all-in-one conversion node. Diving into how to make this setup a little more usable, we're going to split this into two nodes. We're going to first create a pixelation node. So let's grab these two nodes over here, hit Control G, and that'll bring us into a node group here. Now, what we want to do is set what we have output here. So I'm going to grab the scale here, plug that in over here. We can open the end panel when you hear, come to the node group option here, come up to the group option here, and you can change all the names of all the sockets you have here. So let's call this one pixelation, and we'll call this one resolution. Now I'm going to leave mine set to UV as hopefully your UV unwrapping. Now, if we tab out here, we have a node group here and let's name this node group pixelation. Perfect. And we can change our resolution here and it'll dynamically update. Now let's grab all of these nodes over here and we're going to call this the color limiter. So we'll grab these, come into edit mode here, and we wanna leave that color socket exposed. And then this is why we're using this math node. So we're going to grab this value down here, plug it in there, and we're going to call this color limitation. Now, if we tab back out here, you can see that we have two nodes that we can place in between our colors and our materials that we can then import to use in any project. We'll go ahead here and call this one color limiter. And with these two nodes, you can just go ahead and make all of your adjustments and import these nodes into any project and easily convert into retro textures. So I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'd show you also how to add extra details. So that's pretty simple. Let's look at our color image texture setup here. Here I have the image texture going in, which is all of our base color here. And we're going to add a mixed color node. We're going to plug that color into A, then you're going to make a new image texture, plug that color into B, and then you're going to plug that alpha into the factor there. Now, when you create your new image texture up here, we'll call this pixel face, you're going to want to set a really low resolution. Now, this is going to depend on the size of your model, but in general, things like 128 pixels or 256 should be safe. Now, you want to check on alpha there, and then with the color here, you're going to grab that color and turn that alpha all the way down. Now, when you click new image there, you'll see that no change has been made because we have an alpha, and now we can paint on that alpha. Now, if I come over to the texture editing mode here. Now over here in texture paint mode, we're going to want to adjust a few settings. Now, first of all, you're going to want to set your radius to something super small, like one, two, three, five pixels, something like that. And that'll give you a tiny brush to work with and allow you to do that more pixelated art. Now, the other thing you're going to want to do is come down here to the fall off. So we'll come over here to this preset brush shape at the end, which is constant, which means that it will just create a constant look for us. Now you'll notice that's still blurring and that's because you need to come over to your pixel face here. And right now it has a linear texture interpolation. So we'll grab that and we'll change that to closest. And now you can see that we are able to paint there with little pixels so that we can add additional details if we like. Now, as I said in the beginning, I'd show you how I reduced the geometry to get this low poly look. So I actually went from this model to this model. Let me talk about some of the tools you can use to do that. I'm going to show you the paid tools that I like to use first. One is called Quad Remesh here, and this uses a remesh algorithm that is really great. You can set how many quads you want here, change the adaptivity, and what it will do is when it remeshes it, it will maintain quad. And out of all the remeshers I've used, this has been the best in terms of maintaining good topology. Now, of course, you're probably already familiar with Retopaflow. It's available on Blender Market. And this is another paid add-on that makes this process super easy. It adds a lot of tools that just simplify the process, making it a lot less tedious. However, this still does cost money. So let's look at some of the free options we have built in Blender. So Blender has its own remesh modifier and it's called the decimate modifier. And you can add this to any model here and begin collapsing. Now, if you move too quick, it can brush your computer. So be careful. And you'll notice here that as I drag it down, what it's doing is kind of destroying the geometry and giving me a lot of ugly triangles mixed in there. So what I actually recommend doing is using the unsubdivide mode. Now, if you've properly modeled your model with quad topology, 
then this will make this a lot easier. So what it will do is actually work on unsubdividing the textures there. So you'll see that as I move along there, how it is actually maintaining that quad look across a lot of portions. Now you may need to break up your model into separate pieces and do pieces individually, or if you want, you can also manually do it with the edge mode. So come here into edge mode, and then you can alt click these lines here. And what that will do is grab the entire edge loop, and then you can hold shift alt, and you can just begin clipping. Now what I did is mostly manual work like this to achieve this result, and it took me about an hour or two. And what I did is just click every other line, then press X, and then dissolve edges. And if I wasn't happy with the amount, then I would go ahead and do it again. Now the other thing you can do is to move your edge loops around, you can double tap G, and that will allow you to move it up and down on the normal there. 